being the crypto space that we're using blockchain and Ethereum all of a sudden come into other parts of the sort of monetization by digitizing uh, collectible assets. So can you give us just a few examples of the components of your ETF? Well, it's 80% cargo, plane, uh, cargo uh, ships, and then it's 20% cargo jets. Yes. So we have cargo from the Canada has a car, well-known cargo airline, uh, and it's based on a quant model. It rebalances once a quarter, uh, and it's based on who is demonstrating the strongest growth in revenue per share and cash flow per share, and then who has least amount of debt on a relative basis. A lot of shipping companies have a lot of debt. It's something that's always been highly leveraged. Uh, the debt capital in the world for financing this is Singapore. So it's important to follow what's happening in Singapore and logistics. And it's very highly correlated to commodity demand and global trade. So it really relates to my global resource funds and my world of gold and, and purchasing manufacturers index. So I think this is just one of those great products. If I see the PMIs turning, like I said a year ago, they're gonna they're taking off. This is one of those products that will all of a sudden give you this massive 100% moves on the upside. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at the um, ISM uh, PMI. It's still, you're right. It's uh, it, it has topped, it's, um, slowed down a little bit. It's above 60, it's above 50 still. So still, uh, you know, above 50 still means it's, the economy is somewhat expanding, but uh, it's not. Uh, well, what's, what's important is that you have got to look at the global PMI and then yeah. the China PMI is 50% of all commodity demand is China. So the, the China PMI is much more strongly correlated with, with gold and base metals uh, sure. and, Whereas when you look at America, it's Boeing jets. Uh, we export uh, GE MRI machines. Uh, and so it's a, it's a different uh, sort of foreign currency movement. So what does that mean for commodities then? And uh, I'm going to include gold and silver into the commodities basket. So you've well, got- I uh, think the, the great trade this quarter is gold. I, I just think it's uh, mathematically when you look at any time we've had such big negative real interest rates uh, that you gold has a surge. And when it happens, it'll be everyone will be shocked by it. And when you look at the gold mining companies, I just wish they would adopt what, what a lot of the crypto mining companies do. We hodl, H-O-D-L, hold on for dear life. Hold on, take 10% of your free cash flow and don't sell the gold. Own it if you really believe it. And the issue is that a lot of crypto mining executives believe in Bitcoin and Ethereum, especially the Bitcoin audience. But gold guys can't wait to sell their gold because they really don't believe. The last guy that really believed was Rob McEwen uh, when he was building Gold Corp. Uh, and I believe that today Grand Columbia is the only one that's holding five or ten percent of their gold production. Mm -hmm. But so many mm -hmm. other companies just bank it away. Gold should be at four thousand dollars an ounce today based on the G7 money printing and the negative real interest, interest rate spread with a 10-year government bond. So back it up, be long gold. Yeah, look, I mean, what the crypto people are doing are quite smart. If I were if I were a crypto uh, a company, I would hold it too. I mean, I'm, isn't that just taking supply off the, uh, off the equation? And of course, with lower supply, you, you're going to have to uh, see a price increase. It's like Kitco has the incredible uh, smart gold coin collectors. And yeah, they buy some just of the normal coin production, but the collectors, they yeah. know yeah. that if there's a limited supply of any stamp or any gold, that it, over time it appreciates. And now what's happening is that we're getting the digitization of baseball cards with NFTs and NBA and NHL. So we're, we're seeing the crypto space that we're using blockchain and Ethereum all of a sudden come into other parts of the sort of monetization by digitizing uh, collectible assets. So the fact that the, they're monetizing these other assets means that the blockchain itself and the limited supply of Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're going to appreciate. Okay. So let's talk about Ethereum then as we speak today. Just today, Ethereum and Bitcoin on Tuesday have both reached new all-time highs. Can you give us some uh, reasons for this push in the last couple of weeks? Well, I think it's historically going in the last quarter, we do get the big a, a, a pop here in, in the Bitcoin and Ethereum enthusiasts. Um, and and I, so I do believe that there's much more adoption, just like you start off with JP Morgan uh, and Bank of America, they love Ethereum. 
But the crypto ecosystem is really maximus or ardent gold bugs for me because they believe they read from the same uh, old the, the Bible of printing money. They basically look at the Pentateuch and, and they give you history case study after history case of governments destroying their paper money. And what's great to own during all is gold. And now all of a sudden we have a new audience that are more current in all government destroying paper money and it's Bitcoin. So they're much more captivated on the preservation of capital and the value of Bitcoin is going to grow uh, exponentially. Ethereum, they believe it, but really the ecosystem is many more scientists. They're many more sort of like a socialist mindset scientist. Uh, and they want everything to try to be free. And it's really fascinating to me to watch. It has more of a hierarchy who dictates where they're going in the direction, whereas this Bitcoin is much more horizontal and diversified, and non-centralized around yeah. the world. That's interesting. Do you think DeFi is becoming more CeFi, more centralized, so to speak? No, 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 I don't. I think it's just very creative. If, okay. if you know how to code and, and, and you think you can digitize something, uh, we made an investment high in, in DeFi. Uh, we listed it on the Neo Exchange in Toronto, and it's done spectacularly well. They have almost $400 million in their ETF equivalent in the Nordic place, in the Nordic uh, countries alone, in Sweden. So uh, there's something there. It's very profitable. And now we talk about NTE.V. Uh, I, I think that this is a company that makes money. The business has turned because of COVID's behind them, making documentaries of icons. Uh, they have done Muhammad Ali. They have done Bruce Lee. Uh, they have done many great icons. They're going to start the plan to digitize all those films. So think of Andy Warhol having a thousand prints of Mao. And those prints came out at a thousand dollars and he had five colors and all of a sudden they go to a quarter million each of them as china's economic boom took place they all wanted to have the colorful original one of the prints of mao uh it's because it's a collector's item what happens yeah. when you have bruce lee and you have the footage and you have the ip ha ha frank Break last price. question what are you gonna what are you gonna make your own N nfts frank when can we buy a frank holmes nft no, not for me. I like to invest in young minds like you, young guys like you. That's that's my vision to see you prosper and, and, and see other people use their creative juices to create wealth and joy and, and prosperity and health for other people. All right. Well, uh, thank you.